Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. The Chessable Masters has just begun. It's the latest rapid play online tournament organised by the Play Magnus Group. And indeed, the world champion Magnus Carlsen is participating. I'm going to show you one of his games. This features a fascinating opening gambit, which I've explored a little myself. And, and I'm going to be looking at this in some detail in my next Patreon opening survey. Uh, for those of you who are Patreon patrons or patrons uh, and you're on the right level, then um, look forward to that. It's, this is a really fascinating line. So White has played, sorry, let me just backtrack a, a moment. White has played C3, the so-called Alapin opening, which is very common, very reliable, very common at club level, but actually also at, um, you know, at high levels as well. So very reliable. White would like to build a big center with pawn to d4 and recapture with this pawn. Lots of ways to counter this, but here Carlson plays d5, one of the main moves, and white should take that. And here, of course, the standard move is to take and then d4, and very often you get an isolated queen's pawn position, but it takes a little bit of time for black to kind of reorganize himself. The queen can't live on that central square. But instead of the, the normal move, queen takes d5, Carlsen played knight f6. This is a really interesting gambit. It's very logical that black would like to recapture that pawn with knight takes d5, and that way you don't have the hassle of, being, of your queen being kicked around. And if white supports that with c4, then you play e6, and after this exchange, there's a big hole on d4, and black has nice development. That's the, the basic idea. But you know, white can try to hang on to that pawn in various ways. Bishop b5 check is one of the approved methods. Knight d7, and now c4. So now it's, of course, less easy for black to play e6, because that'll be exchanged, and then there's pretty nasty isolated pawn there. But there are other ways for black to play. Carlson played a6. Now if the bishop goes back to a4, then b5 kind of explodes things. That's good fun. Grandelli is exchanged on d7, and queen takes d7. So black has the two bishops, but is a pawn down. And at the moment, you know, that looks quite strong. So Black has to break that down somehow, usually with e6. Grandelli has played d4, so you know wants to develop very quickly. But actually, after e6, the position is starting to open, and these two bishops are about to fly into the game. And actually, Black's development is better than White's as well. It's already absolutely fine for Black. For example, if pawn takes pawn, you can recapture with the queen, check, and after here, queen takes c4. Black already has the pawn back and has two bishops. Grandelius played bishop e3. That's a really risky move. Let's see what happens. He's trying to hang on to one of his pawns, but it's a mistake. He tried knight a3. Well, if white can capture on c4, then that is a beautiful square for the knight. But black has, well, more than one good move in this position, actually. I'll let you have a little think about this. I'll have just a little, little drink of my glass of water. You have a little think. Black to play. Now, Carlson played knight d5. It's a good move, but even stronger was pawn to b5. Now, if these pawns remain as they are, that's a beautiful pawn chain. And this long diagonal opens up for the bishop. Lovely. And if it's taken en passant, watch this. Check. 
already very uncomfortable for white. If bishop d2, queen e7 check, that's really nasty, protecting the bishop. If knight e2, c3 is already a winning move. This just overloads uh, white completely. So for example, this, and then queen takes knight, piece up. So after the check, king f1, and now well, c3 is still good, but castles is even better. With the king displaced, black's development is very free and easy. Maybe the bishop will come here, or rook b8. I mean, this is just a beautiful attack. So b5 is a great move. Carlson didn't play b5. Instead, he played knight d5, also good. And now white's best is to take here. And this simply gives black a very good position with two bishops. But instead of that, Grandelius played bishop d4, and after knight f4, he was in massive trouble. The knight, woof, a potential octopus on d3, also looking here, really nasty. King f1 played, slipping out of uh, danger on the e-file, protecting this pawn, but obviously not really what you want here. And again, b5 is a really strong move. And simply bishop b7. And white is so tied up in that position. It's a beautiful position for black. But Carlson played instead queen d5. Also not bad. And here he could just take on c5. But no, he wanted more. Bishop f5. And it certainly doesn't look bad. Queen a4 check. Probably best here is actually king d8. But bishop d7 also reasonable. Queen b4. Okay, I'll give the move to you again. I'll even flip the board for you. Black to play. What would you play here as black? Carlson had a very strong move, but he didn't spot it. He could have played bishop h3. Wow, it's an absolute killer. Threatening here, threatening here. Oops, that's, that was a misfire, threatening here and threatening here, for example. Uh, it's absolutely deadly. If check, the king is actually safe here. And if pawn takes bishop, queen takes, it's almost mate straight away, actually. Um, yeah, rook g1, queen e2 is mate. It's so quick. But no, Magnus did not spot bishop h3. Let me flip the board back. Played b6. It's very interesting, but not as good as bishop h3. And now it's just getting pretty random again. f6 from Carlson, so he's just giving his king an escape square on f7. And the pawn on f6 does cover the e5 square. Knight c2. And now an interesting move. I, I think Carlson was sort of worried about this knight you know, hopping in here and taking this pawn. He played c3. So giving up that pawn, but it does damage white's pawns pretty badly. I mean, if you feed this into a computer, it, it, it actually thinks that white, white is okay here. It's, it's about equal. But it's interesting how... Uh, in fact, in practical terms, I think this is far more difficult for white to play than black. Black's king is pretty safe. Very safe, actually. I mean, this pawn does a great job of covering these squares. Of course, there's no light square bishop. It's not clear where white's king is going to go. I think particularly in rapid play, this is the kind of decision that you have to... Well, it's, it's, it's very difficult to get right when you're short of time. Um, Grandelli's played h3 and it's not the best decision knight takes c5 so Carlson has one of the pawns back and two beautiful bishops a nice knight on c5 the king is very safe um, so black is threatening to bring out pieces very quickly 
Whereas for white, it's less easy. The king doesn't really find safety on h2 because, see, a bishop d6 check will be very embarrassing for the king. So Grandelius had an opportunity to you know, level things up. In fact, h4 would have been better than h3 with sometimes the possibility to play rook h3. But now it's tough. King e2, but the king does not find safety in the middle of the board. Knight e6, watch out here. And now it's pretty horrible if the king steps here. Then simple exchanges and bishop b4 check wins material. Slicing through the king. And g3, oof, oof. Doesn't feel good and it's not good. Those two bishops came into play and bishop b4 is absolutely deadly. Um, afraid the king is just, well, the, the, the rook is, is dreadful here. The king, the king is in massive trouble and, and the rooks are about to enter the game. Knight d2, rook c8. I mean, there really is no defense, you know, simple moves here. Uh, maybe a check, maybe rook d8. It's not looking good. Knight d5. And watch the finish. Bishop a4. Rook check. The knight blocked. Rook c2. And that was the final move of the game. Threat to take here. If rook d1, then, well, there are various ways to win. Uh, rook takes a2 is pretty good. Threatening the rook. If the rook moves, then the knight is taken by the rook. That's not bad. Uh, let me show you another move in this position. Um, bishop b5 check is fun. Now, this is not completely forced, but you get the idea. So that... Um, so bishop, bishop takes knight, knight takes rook, and now those bishops just slice the king. This is really nasty. Check and mate or okay let's get let's get a little bit flash here now what do you want rook h8 bishop g5 or pawn to g5 ah let's give the bishops the final word in the game and that's a spectacular checkmate uh i repeat the final position was actually rook c2 that's just a little bit of my fantasy so a, a very convincing victory. And as I said, this gambit idea, uh, there is a lot more to it than meets the eye. It's a very simple uh, idea. And frankly, I'm surprised this hasn't pl been played more often. I actually recommended it on one of my Power Play DVDs a long time ago. Um, but it seems to be coming to the fore again. I wonder with sort of more computer research whether a few more players have sort of latched onto this, but there seems to be a little trend of it. As I said, I will be investigating this in my next Patreon opening survey. Do consider subscribing and supporting the channel as well if you're interested in that. Right, more coming your way soon. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching.